everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Behind Company Lines podcast. Today we have Valentin, CEO and CTO of Peak Connect, where their technology enables businesses to build on the current reward engagement model of his bench of earned stars and coach. But also introduces new methods of emotionally engaging customers and offering a set of rewards, including one of a kind of strands that this can't get anywhere else. Now, team, thank you so much for joining the show. I was excited to have you on and, and really dive into this whole award based model. I've been sending so many sounders to believe that have um, built in incentives for the user base that are very positively engaging and rewarding. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that's the direction of the future, which I'm excited about. Uh, before we get into all the, all the good stuff with Peep Connect, what were you doing before you started the company? Ooh, good question. Uh, uh, well, first off, Julian, it's a, it's a great to be here. Um, thank you so much for the introduction and the opportunity. Um, what was I doing before I was in college and prior to college, or even still while I was in college, I was helping run my friend's, um, restaurant. Um, while there, I, some of the things I did on the side was, um, building tech, not just for my parents, but also for other businesses that were in the industry, things like website building or something yeah. like setting up their POS systems or even setting up their rewards. Mm-hmm. Um, those were kind of my, that was my expertise and something that I was good at. Yeah. And so like my mom and her friends and their friends, friends and things like that, that was kind of my foray into um, what I'm doing now. So I, I was in college doing things on the side, graduated, yeah. got into people. Yeah. What, what was the kind of like did you always have this itch to do more and see things in a different perspective, enable technology or use technology to enable uh, what people were doing? What what was the kind of antithesis for for engaging? Not a lot of people say, oh, here's the problem or maybe here's a way we can do it better. I'm going to go do it myself. Have you always been that kind of person? A curiosity, to be very honest. Like I have, I have the tendency of just sticking my nose to find things out and not stopping. Until it's like, I find it, like I, I'm able to figure it out. And if you're a computer science major, that's actually one of the things you need in debugging. <laughs> you need yeah. patience. And I, I like to say patience is not a virtue of mine, but these are the skills you, you need the patience, you need the curiosity. And last but not the least, you need to have like an open mind when you actually yeah. figure it out. But and that open mind speaks to. Maybe my idea is not the best or what I was thinking is not the best. And this is the best thing to be able to yeah. do. And putting it in that perspective. So I, I will not really say I'm the kind of just to go out there, find the problem and solve it. The thing is that I must have been encountered the problem as either the user or uh, like the, someone who has been using, I must have encountered it. And then I'm like, hmm, this could yeah. be better. And then <laughs> I try to see what I can do, do about it. Yeah, I, I love that perspective, and and I, I'm curious, you know, based on the industry and kind of helping, um, you know, restaurants or brick and mortar businesses um, connect with more uh, more customers and and create this whole loyalty kind of um, um, model and integration. You know, I, I I personally love going to a local business, even if it's not local, any type of business, and having a great experience or having something that ties me in. I'm always fascinated about what they're doing, whether it's like psychologically or within their structure that get, continues uh, for, for that re-engagement. What have you seen that's been super successful for businesses who can have a, continue, a continued customer base? Um, you know, a lot of people think about new client acquisition or customer acquisition, but I think there's something to be said by those who maintain, maintain a loyal customer base. What are some mm-hmm. uh, businesses doing right? And what are some, uh, where are the other businesses missing? Well, this is a very good question and I'll break it down in very, uh, uh, let me answer it in this way. Yeah. First off experience. Yeah. The thing ex- and why I say experience is because experience breeds loyalty. Mm, yeah. You will be able, you will be loyal to a place. You might walk into a coffee shop. And buy coffee, right? And mm. they have the, forgive my language, the worst coffee, the shittiest coffee they yeah. have out there. But how they treat you, the experience you have there will make you the next time you're walking by, you're going to say, let's go here. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. And that's what it, I always tell people, people will forget you. People will forget what you look like. People will forget how you feel, but people will never forget the way you made them feel. So it's all about status. And I think that's one thing businesses, most businesses don't understand. The few that understand it, and these are like big, medium-sized enterprises who are customer obsessed, yeah. so obsessed with what their customers are doing that they want to create not just a place that people can come and have good food or good drink or whatever. They want to create an atmosphere where people can come and have an experience that is yeah. so different from what they go outside, like wh wh when they go somewhere. Like, I want people to come in, be able to sit down and watch sports. I want people to be able to come sit down, place an order, or people to be able to come in or even jog the line. Today, it, yeah. it's not just about food anymore. Food, everyone, you can get food almost anywhere. That's the truth. The thing is, where can you get the best experience? Yeah. And that's one thing that we hear, like, that's the way I think about it here at Pete and how I think about it going forward. Yeah. It's, it's so, uh, I mean, I was having a conversation with my partner recently and, and we were trying to figure out where to go and, and, you know, we were going between whether ordering something to be delivered or going to a place to actually have, you know, some kind of experience or, or just enjoy ourselves. And I mean, you echo such a, I think such a inner, um, want and need that people have, especially currently to, to have and go do something that's productive. And a lot of times just, you know, and having an enjoyable experience where, I mean, where are companies or, or restaurants, they're not customer focused or they're not or they're doing too many things and where can they improve? Is it, you know, is it focusing on a customer or a specific type of customer or overall creating maybe an internal ambiance that will make them successful? Or is it, is it utilizing technology, um, to do things more efficiently or effectively? I think it's a mixture of all, 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 all of them. Yeah. And why? Because the present age yeah. comes in the, in today's present age, consumerism has changed. Yeah. What that mattered previously, those that ma don't matter, almost don't matter anymore. And that's the truth. Like, yeah. you think about it, like, there's a burger grill. I'm currently in Kansas City. There's a burger grill almost like every half block away. It, it is true. There is a burger grill almost every half block away. But why should each of them matter? The question today is, even when you look at social media, people are trying to be stand out. People are trying to be known. People are trying to have an elevated status. It's the same mindset with the business. Why do you matter? Why should you matter? Why should I come to you? Why should I eat at your place? And when the you... business should be able to answer this question. So this series of questions in a way that is so eloquent. Now, it could be targeting a specific kind of customer, just one type of people. And then from then on, you grow it. It could also be that you target everyone, but you limit yourself to maybe a few certain segments. But I would always say you target just that one sort of mindful, mindful customer. And then you build on that. Technology has also made it way easier that we, sh we could do yeah. this today. And the encouragement with businesses is that even if like my mom, like it's always a back and forth with her. Like it's, I feel it's easier to tell her to change the entire furniture in the restaurant than <laughs> telling her to change the POS system. Now, I'm yeah. not kidding you. Like changing the POS system is so hard. Like it's, it's, a, it's an argument that she will cry about it for months before she says yes. <laughs> well, she will change her chair immediately. The reason is because they're not digitally, digitally savings and things like that. And yeah, that's some, something that can breach that divide to bring in that one customer, but not just that one customer, but the next one and the next one and the next one. Yeah. How did, you know, going through the experience, um, obviously you, you had such a, I think, unique experience where you were able to test, I'm sure, in, in your, your parents' business, uh, different solutions, different ways you can engage with customers. How did you fall on PEEP? And how did you fall on this particular solution that you felt um, 
it was adoptable across multiple, whether it's brick and mortar business or restaurants, um, and that you thought, you know, this could be really the up leveling of experience and, and an easy solution for those, whether or not they had a good customer experience or just needed it to grow and expand. How did you fall on this in particular? And can you explain exactly what the product does? Oh, okay. How do I explain this? How do I, so we, in the first iteration of Peep, it wasn't what we were doing now. What we were doing then was really simple and it was just kind of getting a geolocation location platform whereby people can go in shop and have it shoot through their network to their friends and tell them our target audience was we're college students. Like friends telling friends, oh, I, I ate at this place. I earned points here and I can use this point at any other location that is on this. Yeah. So in the initial sense of the word, what we were trying to build was a digital community for these businesses. And why that was important was because most businesses or almost all businesses, their margin, all restaurant businesses have very low margins. So how do you build a community that you can or has the possibility to monetize past food and merch? So that was the mindset in the, that, that came to the yeah. first, like, how do we build this new kind of digital community? How do we? create reputability at this, at places like this, like create that. And we weren't thinking of it in form of experience. We were just thinking of it at the initial sense. Oh, let's just create a digital community. People will like it. And this was during COVID though, mind you. So it, it was really imperative then that we had started some, but that was what we were wanting to do to yeah. what we're doing now. So just like for today. Um, if I'm say, talking about what we're doing today is that we believe that the future of guest experiences at most restaurants will, will run through PEEP itself, um, whether that be true, giving them a white label, whether that be integrating with their POS system and that businesses will incorporate most of this, like incorporate PEEP uh, to deploy personalized tokens and easily automate it for them. Um, but what we are mainly doing, or one uh, ca one um, ambition we have is that we want to help businesses to gain data on their customer across yeah. multiple businesses. Yeah, and this is the the only people ability. This the only way this information is available today is on your credit card companies. Yeah. Now think of what if uh, places like Chipotle or let me say McDonald's, for instance, right? Can be able to track how you shop. Like it, on one side, you as a user know every single company that has access to your data, mm -hmm. which is the most important thing. Yeah. And you can either allow them to have access to it or not allow them to have access to it. And then these businesses, if they incentivize you to have access to it, maybe giving you a free merge or whatever. They can have access to it, the, and then something like McDonald's can see when you go, you come, you shopped at McDonald's, you came out from McDonald's, walked into a boba tea shop and bought boba. Yeah. Now McDonald's can decide, hmm, what if we offer an experience in the sense to eat half these people buy burger and boba at McDonald's? Yeah. Really? Yeah. We can offer them everything that they really actually want. Yeah. But it's not part of that. The, now on the user side, there is a gamification and well, I just talked about the benefit to the, to the business on the user side, there is kind of a gamification involved. So every time you walk into something like a Starbucks and you buy Starbucks, you earn like it Starbucks token. And oh, every yeah. time you go into a separate, every other different Starbucks location, you get to level up an attribute of these tokens. Maybe it might be the horn, maybe it might be the teeth, maybe it might be the head, maybe it might be the tail, whatever it is. Or oh, cup. Every time you level up an attribute, say you level up the horn to level 20, right? Now you are a premium member at Starbucks and Starbucks every six months will send you one of their exclusive merch. You have exclusive membership rights whenever you go to uh, priority rights, whenever you go to a Starbucks to shop, because you can now 
See all those long lines? You can actually now cut it. Yeah. Now you can unlock a uh, sale level 15 and get a uh, 15% at the Nike store. Just because you shot at Starbucks. It also creates partnership on a micro level and makes these customers have like a different experience. Or yeah. even now you're at level 25, you can vote on Starbucks menu. Yeah. For this coming. So what do you want? You want to, you want more, you want this or you want, you can vote on it just because you, like now we're not talking just about 15% of 20% of what we're now talking about is status. Yeah. And that's what we are building. That's the experience we are building here. And so it's incredible to think about the, the way like companies like yours can really intertwine the experience so that you, you can feel such attachment to the brand, I think that's what a lot of us want, right? Is, is if we, they have something we like, we want either more of it, or if they're, you know, pushing out something new or have ideas, it's kind of this whole decentralized um, kind of philosophy, whereas our boat counts into whatever this mm -hmm. company is doing. And, and, it's, and it's brilliant the way you've kind of gamified it in, in a lot of ways that, you know, we can experience it through one localized point because... I mean, first of all, I was a big Starbucks, you know, premium member. I don't want to brag, but I, I did get some free, free drinks occasionally. Um, but, but it, it, it's difficult to go to so many different applications to then kind of you know, collect all these different points and things like that. What, tell us a little bit about the traction. So, uh, what are you excited about? Who are you working with? How many companies are on your platform? How many users are engaging with it per month? Give us a little bit of insight into where the traction is and, and, uh, where the growth is now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we are actually just came out of private, I'll say semi private beta. We're still in kind of a private beta at this point. So we've launched with a few like small time, um, places, uh, medium sized business to work our kinks, right. And we just released out of that private beta two weeks ago. Um, and in that two weeks, we have almost up to almost. 500 users on the platform wow. already. Um, and these are just, uh, people who it, it's like I said, it's just that experience. Like people yeah. are like, oh, this is, and the way we did it, it's just so simplified. And I think that's the thing that's where, that's why we're, I, I, I love what we're building here. Like it's so simplified that we integrate directly with the POS system of the business that customers come in. They don't need to go get a MetaMask wallet and then all these things and then go buy and then move it. No, it is, it's automatic. It automatically Im immediately happens when you place an order. Yeah. And so uh, we have uh, up to 500 users. Um, we are launching, we have a part, we have a contract with some bigger clients, um, things like Juiceland and the rest of them. Um, to be able to launch at these places. Incredible. Um, so I, I, I'm really excited for it. We're just taking it one step at a time right now. Sure. Uh, our goal in the short term, like I said, it's just to work out the kinks before we even think of deploying to those bigger places, to those bigger clients, um, and make sure that we are building something that people want. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the cha biggest challenges that people face us today? No, I want to say it's a mixture of fun. I think in the recent times, fundraising has been really tough. Yeah. And it, it, it's, I think it's more so recently because I, I, I was actually fluid. I was out for a few days recently. And, uh, if I am not working or if I am not working on products, there's only two of us. It's hard to actually be building and mm -hmm. fundraising. It's actually hard to be building and deploying at the same time. Yeah. And I am someone who loves feedback. So I'm always looking if I, if people are using, like I always go look through the, 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 the first thing I do every morning, look through the feedback from you. Okay. This makes sense. This makes sense. Oh, well, this is part of our product landscape. Well, the, the, oh my God, I need to think about this. Yeah, yeah. I am that person. Yeah. And so like, we would love to hire more people to help out in, in some, especially with development, but unfortunately, um, our, like we're still working things out, especially with fundraising and 
how that so I'll see it's part of the biggest problem it, it's part of the near term biggest problem but in terms of uh, getting more businesses um deploying more um to customers and things like that I think we've validated it enough already with the people mm-hmm. that we've deployed with for it to make sense that this is actually something people want yeah yeah what what's what's particularly hard about your job yeah. Everything. Oh my God, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can hear it from the side already. <laughs> everything. But see, that's that's what this excites me. It's sure. I don't see it as being hard. I see it as exciting because I can yeah. actually, I'm doing something I love with people that I love. And I'm just going down there and kicking down doors. Yeah, just talking to people I never almost would have met in my entire life if I didn't go this route. And it's always amazing, like, the feeling when you deploy at a place initially and you go into it there or you're just sitting around there working on your computer and all of a sudden you see people just opening up your product. Like, I always feel like, oh, I wonder how Mark Zuckerberg felt. <laughs> that's all people you've done things with. I don't like, that's yeah. what I feel right now. Look, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, well, well, but that is, those are so, some, some of the things, but what is really hard? I don't see, I think hard is an extreme word. Sure. It's not hard. It can be challenging, but every challenge is an opportunity to rise up, to grow yeah. and be better. And yeah. I don't see it as, uh, as hard. It's, there's nothing hard. It, well, there are some things that are hard, if I'm being honest, but it's not hard. It's just, right. it's a new kind of challenge that you put yourself in and you just have to rise up to the challenge and take it on and just keep going. Control. Yeah. I keep telling myself this every time. Control only what you can control. The rest will work out slower than me. Yeah. Is there any, you know, as as an early founder and in, in building this product, is there any problems that you've seen that have been particularly challenging or or, um, or solution wise have been, you know, taken longer to solve that in hindsight? Hiring, hiring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Like, it, it, yeah. To, for me, I put hiring worse than fundraising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finding the right people. Finding the right people is much harder than fundraising. Yeah. That's, it, 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 it's, it's just, man, <laughs> I wish there's a wand, like there's a magic, the Dumbledore-ish wand that exists and be like, get me all the people I want. And then it, it just appear on my screen. I'll be like, you agree. Okay, let's go. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, if everything goes right, what is the long-term vision for people? Ooh, the biggest, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'll say it regardless. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest vision where we see, at the beginning, I told you experience breeds loyalty. The vision I'm going for is, I'll give you another quote, efficiency breeds change of habit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you onboard the next five billion people onto the blockchain that makes it possible that people can use this technology to not just put in rewards, but put in things like their medical documents, uh, something like, um, their, uh, uh, banking or even things like, um, like estates, like I, I own a lot of estates, how the deeds, how, where do I put the deeds? How do we make, how do we bring in transparency into this Mm. space that it fosters that? And I believe today, a lot of the things that you see in the, in the space, it's, I mean, it's nice and good, but baby steps, we have to start somewhere to bring on these people easily and efficiently, efficiently as possible. Right. Yeah. And so this, what we're working on today is a way to make that vision possible. Yeah. Not just here in the States, but also around the world. So today it might be a, 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 an app. Uh, it's, today it might be like a, an app. But tomorrow 
what I see is a product, not an app. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the way I look at it. I love that. I love that. And I, I know we're coming close to the episode, but I always like to ask this one for selfish research, but also for my audience is whether it was early on or, or even now, uh, what books or people have influenced you the most? Oh, man, I can't look like uh, So the, I recently read The Cold Starts. Please, let me pick this up so you see them because I love these books so much, right? I have, I've had these books that I've been reading and I keep these great close by because they are the ones that have actually changed me in so many ways. Make Time by Jake Knapp. This is, this is an amazing book. Jake, he's one of the, I think, early at the Google Ventures. Jake, yeah. Jake and John Zeratsky. So make time is that, um, working backwards. This is uh, it's like early inside stories of, um, AWS, yeah, especially yeah. AWS, Amazon, Amazon, uh, Colin Bryant. It's amazing. And then Andrew Chen decided to bust my head with the current sort problem. I mean, I couldn't ask for three and eight, like anyone that wants to build a company or that is thinking about it, or that has already started needs to read these three books. Incredible. I love that. Now, uh, we love to share this, these reading lists and, and give our audience more and more insights. And I love to talk to founders and ask this question because there's so many different ways or so many different backgrounds founders come from their experiences. It's like a melting pot of information. And, and, and there's, it only really takes one or two sparks to start a fire. And, and whether it's not your, like you said, starting a business or whether you're running one now. Um, before we yeah. jump and before we go, I always like to give my, my guests a chance to give us your plugs. So where can we find you? Where can we support? Where can we connect? Where can we be a part of Peep and its vision? Oh, um, well, I'm a very simple man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Valentine Osarque. Um, Valen, just feel free to go on LinkedIn to look for me there. I'm happy to connect with you all. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. Um, I, VA, Valodera, um, uh, like Valentine, V A L and then O D E R A H, uh, Valodera, uh, that's good for on my Instagram and on my every other hat. It's something easier. It is almost so you can use it and find me on Twitter, on Instagram, maybe Facebook. I don't even know if, the, if I say it's going to happen, anymore. but yeah, so that's, those are some places you will find me. Uh, incredible. And then you can also feel free to email me. I don't know if I'm allowed to put out emails here. Yeah, you can, uh, or whatever you want. But, uh, feel, feel free to send me, if you're looking for the next best, for the next thing, or you're looking to work with me, um, feel free to reach out to me at, uh, V-O-S-A-K-W-E at peep.dev, um, vosakwe at peep.dev, uh, feel free to uh, email me. Uh, I would love to chat with you. I'd love to connect with amazing people who are interested in either joining or even more learning what, about what I'm building and how they can be able to support or how I can also support them on their kind journey of. in uh, as a founder. Um, so that's, uh, that, uh, um, yeah, happy to help it anywhere I can. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Valentin, not only for sharing your early story and, and kind of the antithesis behind the product, but uh, where you currently are and, and the, the future vision that the challenges you face as a, as a founder and, um, and all the information that, that you've gathered, that's really inspired you. So I hope you enjoyed yourself and, and thanks again for being on the show. Thank you so much, Julian. This is amazing. It's, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Uh, I, I always stay away from podcasts, <laughs> but this was, this was really nice because I just, I just felt like I had a conversation. Fantastic. I love to hear that. Well, until next time. Thank you so much. Bye.